What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fun, Fun with, with Dumb. Dumb. And you know, when people see me, they might think I'm a little rough around the edges, but one thing I do care <laughs> about is manners, as you may know, as mm. we've talked about this many times on the show. There's things that bug me, you know, and yeah. I take note when I'm out and about. It could be a restaurant or whatever. I okay. see little things. I'm not saying I'm the most, you know, yeah. manner. What, what's it? What, what would I say? I'm you not have well, good well manners. manners. Well mannered. You, well, you said I didn't even know how to you say. Don't even know the well mannered. <laughs> Yeah. Or uh, a g- gentlemanly, yeah. as s- some may think. But I, I don't know. There's peeves. I have peeves. Yeah. And ultimately, mm-hmm. that's what it is, right? You don't, you don't want to get on in people, get people annoyed, get in their peeves. You know for what sure. I mean? Um, it's that's also for like your... bad manners. What? You know that, right? What? what? To call out other people's issues. Or I don't. Whatever, I hold but... it in. And I may give them a side eye. I take Yo, a mental step, step, step. note. We'll just let them lie okay. this intro. All right, we'll, we'll, wow. We'll, we'll, no, 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 no. I just say and... I take mental <laughs> notes. I take mental notes. Mm-hmm. And and maybe that's not fair, but people tend to do that. That's you know? okay. It's to avoid okay. that. And then that's to avoid that. <laughs> so recently I came across a show on Netflix called uh, Mind Your Manor. Mm-hmm. Manners. And um, there was a host. Uh, she was she's from China. She's an Asian woman. And I was like, oh, you know, I, I tend to take notes of like Asian people doing amazing things. Right. And I uh, saw the show and came across her on one of my friend's IG stories. I was like, oh, you know her? Connect us. Can we get her on the pod? Two days later, she's here. This is the host of Mind Your Manners, Sarah Jane. Ho. Let's go. Woo! How are you doing? Guys, such a pleasure to be here, John. Welcome. Welcome. Please. You're such an icon. Like I watched almost every episode. There's one I haven't watched. And I went on my Netflix, I shared it with my mom. Someone was already watching it, so I texted my family. My mom had watched your show already. I didn't know it That's just really came amazing. out either. Yeah, she loves it. She finished it. So. That makes me so happy to hear. <laughs> and so I will good. say, her mom is a very well mannered woman. Like, oh my she, god, she yeah. dresses so eloquently. Mm. Just... We, I mean, like we grew up having to like. Bu- my mom bought like a bunch of manners books. Really? Amazing. Yeah, she, yeah, That's she was amazing. More, it is, but I think like my idea because of that, when I think of manners and like etiquette, is very like old school. Mm. And watching before I watch your show, and I wa- saw what it said, mind your manners. I was like, oh, it's going to yeah. be kind of like disciplinary. St- yeah, <laughs> kind of like stuck up those vibes, right. antiquated, but it's not. It's not completely li- different. It, it goes a little deeper, I guess. Yeah. So why don't you talk to us about how you felt so passionate about this and dived into this world? Yeah, well, you know, like Stephanie made a good point. Um, and I think that's what I'm so grateful to Netflix for is that they really have their pulse on like how to recreate things in really original ways, mm. in really fresh and relevant ways. And I feel that that's what what I was able to do with my show with Netflix. And so I've been in China for the last 10 years teaching etiquette. Mm. Wow. Um, every day in, day out. That's that's my day job. And, uh, and so I started off in Beijing in 2012. So I graduated from Harvard Business School. Uh, probably the only person from Harvard Business School to graduate and open up, up a finishing school. Right, right, right. <laughs> I remember asking a couple of professors about it and they were like, we're really confused. Go ask another professor. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay. So I went on this like wild, you know, merry-go-round of like asking different professors. And I was like, okay, well, I just told my dad. I was like, dad, you know, I'm thinking about opening an etiquette school in China. And my dad was like, you know, he's sitting in Hong Kong where I grew up. He said, um, China is ready for this. The mm. time is right. If there's anybody who can do it, it's you. Oh. Wow. And he was like, what's the worst case scenario? In six months, you know, if it works out or not, if it doesn't work out, you can go back to doing your little nonprofit thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I moved to Beijing and uh, and I, you know, went about opening up an etiquette school. And what, now it's 10 years later. What wow. inspired you to open up an ed- Like when you were in school, why, yeah. why etiquette? Were, was there a need? Were people asking you? About- um, that's a really good question. So... Uh, when I grew up, I grew up with my mom hosting in the house a lot. And to me, she was my role model and inspiration hostess. She really knew how to create magical moments, bring people together who hadn't mm. met each other before. And, right. you know, and they would stay at our home till like the wee hours. Mm. Christmas would be 30 people at our house. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I really, I really love that. Um, and, and then when I was 21, she got diagnosed with cancer. You know, I talk about it a little bit in, 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 in Mind Your Manners in the show. Um, and and so right after graduating from Georgetown, basically a few weeks later on, she she passed away. Mm. Uh, and our house was never the same again because mm. I th- I feel that men don't really entertain in that same way if if they're you know without right. their wife. It's it, a lot of it is driven by by the mother and the wife. So, you know, Christmas was really lonely. Mm. I'm an only child. Um, people mm. didn't come around to our house anymore. And uh, and and I just I thought well. 
you know what? Like I, I can actually, I can continue my mother's legacy um, by doing what she taught me and what I love. I'm, I'm really social by nature. I'm a Sagittarius, stereotypical mm. Sagittarius. <laughs> Happy birthday. It's season. Thank <laughs> you. Yes, it's coming up. Oh. And, uh, and, and I thought, well, you know, let, let, and I kind of fitted in with why I thought maybe China, like there was a market need in China um, because I went to Swiss finishing school yeah. and a lot of my friends in Beijing and Shanghai would ask me like, oh, you know, I'm not quite sure about this. Can you tell me? Oh, and then I remember another friend who was actually a very successful businessman in Beijing. He was about to go to Washington, D.C. to have a breakfast meeting with some important, you know, partners. And he was really nervous. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Sarah, you know, I've never had a breakfast meeting before. I really want to know how I should behave, how, what, like, what should I do? Um, I'm really nervous about this. Mm. And I was like, this is so funny because he's so, he was so successful, mm. um, so admired, but then he, you know, he's really nervous yeah. about kind of the wrong things. Right, right. Like, right. And, and so I gave him some tips, but then I realized like, huh, well, now that China is, you know, at that point, 10 years ago, it was a world player, right? A power player on the yep. world stage. And Chinese people were becoming more international, whether it's sending their kids abroad, right. traveling, right? Expanding their businesses abroad. Um, Chinese are always looking to improve themselves. Yeah, mm. It's a very Chinese thing, especially Chinese women. Mm. And uh, and so, you know, there's this hunger for for thirst, for knowledge, for for making oneself better. So thus came my idea. Wow, yeah. that's so cool. Now, I, I feel that with China, like as it's become that powerhouse being international, you have to be prepared for all types of culture. Like mm. specifically with what you teach, is it is it the kind of like a European standard? Like what's the what's the Yeah, so style? that's the misconception because you know, my dad always said, This is yin and yang. If people like what you do, there'll be people who hate what you do. Mm. And I have plenty of haters, so I'm really used <laughs> to it. And the haters like to say Oh, look at Sarah Jane Ho. She's teaching like French royal manners to Chinese people. That's not what I'm doing. We have an international etiquette course. I teach a mix of Western, but mm. I also teach Chinese etiquette. Right. So we definitely have tea ceremony. We have ch Chinese table manners, Chinese toasting in that we teach to our Chinese clients too. I love that because that comes out in your show. Yeah. I, I had no idea you were incorporating these different because like every culture has their own etiquette, own manners. And right. so I love that you brought that in. And it, it taught me a lot about, you know, I, I mean, I'm Korean, but I'm Korean American. And there's so many things that I've lost in my culture. It gets very confusing when we've immigrated. So watching your show and seeing like how you've you honor your, you know, the Chinese side of your, or, you know, you're from Hong Kong, right? Mm -hmm. So like, you honor these other parts of your culture and sharing that it's, it's just amazing. And I, I you're like teaching like these Chinese women, are they Chinese? The, the ladies yeah, they're, the, yeah, they're Chinese, they're, but they're from all over China. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like so beautiful because everyone kind of like shares it even from like in the Eastern culture, like how to use chopped chopsticks appropriately. And I think it's teaching Americans how to honor the asian like when we go to asian restaurants right it's like i don't know how to use some of the things there right? <laughs> yeah well the, you know, so, sometimes there are two sets of chopsticks yeah so everyone's like ooh, whoa whoa like yeah <laughs> <pairs of> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah Yo, i wouldn't know Rick what to is do like, <laughs> yeah yeah wait what, what what are they for so uh, at least in hong kong since SARS, yeah. everybody's always been like okay like really germophobic and now in mainland china since covid in fact you'll see like government posters that are like, oh, we're a civilized nation. We use serving chopsticks. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, serving so chopsticks, And, chopsticks, and yeah. so the one on the inside that's closer to you is the one that goes into your mouth, right? Got that you, you use personally. The one on the outside is the one that is the serving chopstick that you use to, right, put food from the middle to, the, to your own plate. So has the actual pandemic changed dynamics mm -hmm. of etiquette? Like, that's interesting because I know even in Asian foods, like we do family style so yeah. much. Things yeah. have changed. Like the serving middle spoons. Of our, middle of the pandemic, we're like tented in. We have our masks on, but we're sharing the same spoon with the same mother. <laughs> yeah. We're like, yo, we're canceling yeah, we out everything We didn't right have now. serving spoons and stuff for yeah, a while, like yeah. for most dinner tables and restaurants that we've gone to, mm -mm. right? For sure. Mm -mm. Yeah, they just started I, giving metal well, spoons again, man. Well, I noticed like during the pandemic, we there's one, there's Huan Garbi. They would bring out panchans separately, like yeah. instead of all the communal way. Side it's dishes. like we, they started giving us less panchans, but mm -hmm. like in our separate little things little plates and i was like oh this is weird it's like feels weird not to share everything together but how do you keep up with all that like the the updated i guess updating yourself with the new manners or etiquette yeah. well you, you know manners definitely like etiquette changes with the times you mm. know i mean i think that 
um, 50, 60 years ago, for a man and a woman who didn't know each other very well to go out on a date alone was a big no-no in America. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, yeah. and even, you know, during Qing Dynasty in, in China, women, young women couldn't be seen alone with young men. Mm. Um, and, you know, same with, you know, in Europe, etc. So it's, etiquette definitely changes with the time. So there's that, just, for me, it's really just about being ob- observant and, mm. and, you know, just really kind of like, and I love speaking to young people. Every yeah. time I'm with young people, I'm like, what's going on? What are you guys doing these days? You know, what, what what's are the, the hot notos? new manners? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? What's the hot new manners? No, could yeah. you break down some of the, you, there was like these six principles that you kind of broke down on the show. Yeah. Are those kind of what you go by or was that particularly for the show? No, those actually are things that I go by. So um, my course, I have two courses in China. One is called the hostessing course okay. for married women. And then I have a debutante course for unmarried women. Mm. So actually, uh, Jesse, who's one of the Chinese ladies students in my in my show, Mind Your Manners, mm-hmm. she's actually a real student of mine. Oh, wow. She took my course in Beijing like five years ago, and she just happened to be living and working in Sydney. So she was like, "Oh my gosh, yes, I'd love to like get involved again." That's cool. awesome. Um, and so, so our, those are our two main two main courses, and we have all these modules. So each day is usually, you know, it's like a, a full day of modules and. The modules are divided amongst dining, dressing, beauty and grooming, work, um, d- dating and relationships. Big, big, big one, especially since Chinese culture is not really about emoting mm. and expressing mm. <laughs> how you feel. A lot of it's just bottled yeah. up. Wow. So that obviously creates a lot of hurdles in intimate relationships. Oh. Yeah, I saw that. You uh, Do you have men clients as well? You know, in the beginning, uh, I had a gentleman's course, but there were so few signups that we quietly did away with it. Yeah, mm. I'll give you an example of a really <laughs> cute, uh, one of my most memorable male clients. He was, it was in Beijing. He, he was from Beijing, um, from a very well-off family. And he was in his, he was studying his undergrad at uh, UChicago, you know, one of the universities in Chicago. And he'd just gotten himself a girlfriend okay and she was from hong kong and she really liked fine dining so you know in order to you know well in the process of dating her then he was taking to all these michelin restaurants and you had to like order wine and like blah 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 so he came back one christmas break and he was like i I need to sign up he signed himself up for Mm. my course didn't tell his girlfriend in the beginning because he wanted to be a better boyfriend wow isn't that cute that is cute and then and then because you know i have i'm a very strict teacher and there's like no phone policy during class so his girlfriend was trying to get in touch with him. And finally, you know, she she was like, what are you doing? Why are you not answering the phone? <laughs> and he had to tell her in the middle class, well, you know, I'm actually taking this course. Oh. And apparently, because I was like, oh, well, what did your girlfriend say? And he was like, hmm, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> we need more of that. The dudes, I feel like the dudes need more manners. Yeah, like, more, manners. more than anything. I mean, is it rude to wear sunglasses amongst company? I'm just wondering. I mean, that, you know, would, that rude to, under the, would that go under the book of rude? If, if I didn't suffer with uh, photo sensitivity, yeah. Photo, uh, what photo sensitivity? You and Anna Wintour, you know? Yeah, you, exactly. you two together. Is that a thing? <laughs> photo sensitivity? <laughs> what do you mean, photo sensitivity? Like the light, lights or like what? Grimace when I see bright lights. Oh, you know what it's I mean? a little and I don't want to look rude in front of our guests okay you know? <laughs> well, sure. you, you you've, you've opened up two schools uh one in shanghai yeah and one, one in beijing and one in one, shanghai okay gotcha. so i opened up the first one in beijing in 2012 and then in shanghai so our beijing school is a courtyard and it's like a it's a traditional chinese style courtyard mm-hmm. and then the one in shanghai was in the french concession a former french concession i should say and uh and it's a it's half of a villa but then when covid hit that was a really tough time for our mm. business. So I cl- shut down both physical schools. And then wow. now I operate with, you know, Waldorf Astoria Peninsula. So with the five-star hotels in China. Because a lot of our students also fly in from all over China to Shanghai to take the course. Mm. And that's easy. They can stay there. I have the whole dining set up there. They, you know, we can teach class there. What's the kind of a, the, the you know, give me a list of some interesting clients who took your course. Like sure. what, for what reasons? Um... So I, well, for example, okay, so one of my students, um, and this is one of my early students, she's Shanghainese, very beautiful. Uh, her and her husband started their business together and they do a, they have a granite import company. So mm. they own granite mines all over the world mm-hmm. in Spain and, you know, the US, India, here, there, and then they bring it back to China. Uh, and she said that when they opened up their India office, she went with her husband and they met the India GM and she didn't know how to greet him. She wasn't sure if she should shake his hand right. or if in India, because uh, it's more conservative, should she just like do a head nod because no gender, like cross gender, no touching, right? Right. Mm-hmm. 
And she just felt like as, you know, a, a boss wife, right? She was, she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know what to do. And then two, three years later, she's read, saw my school in some news, said to her husband, this is why I need to go. And he was like, all right. And then she came and took our hostess course. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's when I, uh, when we went on mission trips or just went to different countries, we did have courses because, you know, it's different. You know, um, for instance, when we were in Africa, we have to eat everything that they give us. We cannot reject the food, you know, other spots. There's different ways you could reject and be polite. How do you know? How do you update all that? How do you know? Oh, in India, you do this. Mm. Like even some spots, uh, the way you hail a taxi, you know, it's it's all different. Mm -hmm. So do you guys have is that like a universal law or I think it's a foundational thing? It's a foundational or thing. Yeah, no, it is. And, and I think I'm very lucky. So first of all, I'm always studying different countries etiquettes. Mm. Um, and I'm very lucky to have friends from all over the world. So I often, you know, it's it's really important to ask locals. I always For check sure. with locals and I love to travel. Yeah. So that I think that's just really yeah. important. First hand mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. I, okay, can I mention this right now? It's like the air in here is very different. Usually I feel like you guys are much more loud. <laughs> We're definitely minding our manners right now. My I, posture, before I'm you trying not to tell me right Tony, now. We started looking Tony. up how to... Yeah. <laughs> AC, turn on the AC. Yeah. Yeah. What's like, the last time this guy's hair product did? His I'm, hair I'm not, looks okay. nice today. Okay? I'm not going to lie. I like. did spray some Febreze <laughs> I yes, was like, what are some things I, I could do? I spray some Febreze. I wore a dress. He's wearing like a white <laughs> I mean, shirt. She's not, like, you're yeah. not judgmental, right? I mean, that's but the no, whole thing. But no, I'm in like a sweater, gotta, guys. No, yeah, she, yeah. like, okay, so on her show, like, I'm referencing your show so much because it's like, I was like Please taking do. notes. Mm -hmm. I was taking notes. It's so fun. It's like, um, you were saying like etiquette is more about making other people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not about like learning all these little rules and like, trying. so it's like the best thing is just like, how do you make so like studying your environment koreans have this term called nunchi mm. which is like really like experience explain nunchi it's like, it's like social awareness common tact, sense tact having the tact to understand like um yeah don't take the last piece you know like that kind of yeah. thing yeah. Yeah. so i mean every culture kind of has their own version of that and i think that's what manners kind of is right they like, say that yeah. etiquette is for others comfort right but i haven't been this uncomfortable in a while <laughs> It's like but having a parent or something. It's while. weird. No, I'm the just air joking. is so different. It's nah, so funny. Yeah, I mean, nah, not in a bad way. It's okay, so like let me tell you guys a, an <laughs> anecdote. Okay, this is a historical anecdote. Um, and so Queen Victoria, right, was at a formal dinner, and her finger bowl was served, and she drank from her finger bowl. Mm. You're not yeah. supposed to drink from your finger bowl. You're supposed to like tip your fingers into the finger bowl. She drank from her finger bowl. Why? Well, because her guest of honor. According to legend, the Shah of Persia did it first. Uh, and you know something? Every single country and every, every single culture has its own version of this exactly the same story. They just like switch out the characters like, oh, no, no, it happened to our queen. Oh, no, it happened. You. No, no, no. And that's really what the spirit of etiquette is about. It's about making sure that people are at ease around you. Mm -hmm. I love that. There was I, a lot. I mean, the way I was taught was like, you know, just a, <laughs> my dad yelling from the top of his lungs. Oh, yeah. Again, like, Asian parent. To, I grew up with an Asian tiger mom. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Those little things. I remember one of the things was like smelling the food. Like, don't smell the food. Mm. Who taught you that? Your, <laughs> wow, your that mom? is very specific. It's it's a psych. <laughs> he, oh, uh. Like if I picked something up and I smelled the food before yeah. I ate it, like that would look very rude. Uh, but the common etiquette is rude. Is, but I think that is considered rude in Korea, no? Depends on the inches. I don't you know. know. Depends really? on the proximity of I the got nose to food. I got shit for that. Like uh. grabbing a food, smelling and trying to eat it. So I, ever since then, I never smell food. And I judge people that, that smell well, food. Well, hold on. Let me ask you. Wait, I want to know if it's Maybe Korean. you got in trouble because there was some time when you smelt it, didn't like the smell and put it back. Uh, uh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? No. So like you took it up oh, to your I nose. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, I don't I don't know if so. What's the, what's the point of no, this? I'm not talking about like, ooh, something smells good. Like that's yeah. okay. But I'm <laughs> saying like, sniff. if you inspection, inspection sniff, sniff. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Everyone gets to one or two inspections. That was bro. rude. You nah. know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, there was just a lot of little things like that. Do you? I mean, do you guys remember anything that your parents checked you? For? Oh, 100 percent. Um, it was funny too because the hypocrisy was so real. Oh my, my parents God. would my parents would say, "Don't do <laughs> this." Me. But they'll do it yeah, themselves. That's true. You know? I'm also very yeah. Asian. Yeah. yeah that's and, uh, Double standards all the way. Yeah. <laughs> Little things like they would lie. They would say if I lay down after I ate, I'd become a cow. They'd say if I whistle at night, you know, snakes would come. At a dinner table, if I rested my hands like this, this means I wanted my parents to die. 
You know? What? You, yeah, no, no. Tuk bat chinen go. You don't know about tuk bat chinen go? I putting your elbow. Uh, usually putting your elbows you, yeah, on the table is kind of rude. Uh, while you at the dining table, like like putting your elbows. Yeah, but is, I'm is saying, that a thing? That, if you thing, told right? me that, then I'd be like, all right. But when you say I'm, you're gonna kill us by doing that, you you grow up with trauma, bro. There's things like you put the chopsticks into the rice. Well, that yeah. Come oh on, yeah. Bro. Well yeah, but that that so that is. The putting chopsticks in rice is because it's like incense, which is an offering for the dead. Grave site. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, right, yeah. right. For the See, dead. that, they didn't Actually, say that. Actually, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's why? Like, that's a grave like, mode. Oh, no, no. So that's, what, <laughs> so that's like a superstitious kind of thing. There's yeah, that's a lot superstitious. Of super, there's a lot of superstition that's attached to it. Our, yeah. our parents like shaming us in a way that's like, you're going to die. You're going to turn into a cow. Right. That, that, I learned that too. I think that comes from like the Buddhism side of our. Mm. I don't know if it's Korean necessarily. Well, what culture have you seen has almost the most amount of manners <laughs> in general? I mean, well, you, let me tell you, Asian cultures have a lot of like etiquette. I mean, do, Chinese right? culture. Yeah. Wow. Like, I could not even like begin and end with like how much <laughs> etiquette there is. Yeah. It's about. I think it's because. Do you think it's because it's about Confucius? respect? Oh, oh that, <laughs> that Confucius says yes. Yeah. Um, respect, respecting the elderly. Like, I feel like my mom gets pissed if I don't show respect to her. Like, and like anyone that's older. Right. So I feel like Asians, especially, it's like a huge thing. For like, sure. you know, they feel like you've really like done something across a big line if you're not like respecting them themselves. I don't know if that's why with Asian culture. Because like, we need a lot of face. Yeah, saving mm, face. Asian culture needs a lot of face. Uh, that is very It's true. a lot of pride, a lot of face. Um, and because it's, we're a very sensitive culture. So there are a lot of like social nuances that so okay so one of my favorite scenes is Joy Luck Club. Did you guys all watch course, that movie? Yeah, of course. Where um, the really beautiful Chinese daughter brings back her American boyfriend. Yeah. Mm. To dinner, and the mother comes out. She's like, oh, she's holding her prize dish. She's like, oh, this is just my so-so dish. You know, I'm sure there are ways it could be better. And he's like, yeah, add this and add that condiment and <laughs> right and 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 then everybody's horrified. <laughs> yeah. But, but actually, like it's. Chinese or or Asians are have a we're a lot more sensitive to little social cues because we are a high context culture. Mm. A lot of things like there's just a lot of subtle hints, a lot of things left unsaid because it's so context heavy. Whereas the West is a low context culture, right? Mm. America is a low. That's why a lot of what we say is very direct. It's like I have to spell it out for you, mm. and I'll say it out for you, and there's no second guessing. Right. Yeah. So what's interesting because I mean I came over to the states when I was 14. I did boarding school, uni. I did 10 years of education in the states. So I've also become quite you know low context, like very American, yeah, very uh -huh. westernized in a way. And when I go back to China, a lot of times I don't get what people are saying something because right. they'll they'll like say like a third of a sentence and expect me to get it. I'll be like. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's about, it's about a lack of direct communication the way we have here. Verbal yeah. direct communication. I mean, that's the whole right? idea. Of, that's what this, these classes are for. Right. You know, so you don't learn the hard way, I guess. 100%. Yeah. It, uh, man, it's hard communicating with our parents, isn't it? <laughs> so Sarah, let me, Jesus. Let me ask you a question. Um, mm -hmm. Back to the definition of etiquette and making others comfortable, right? And then the mm -hmm. finger bowl story. So imagine you go to a Korean dinner and I saw the soup the proper way to drink soup you know but in our culture sometimes a lot of the slurp is a sign of respect it's a sign of like oh my gosh mm -hmm. this is incredible this is yummy this is yummy would you slurp as well if everyone else is slurping oh yeah if if other people if you, everybody would, else would you acclimate slurping, to the situation I ab absolutely do excellent absolutely so etiquette is very uh, it's yeah it's contextual it's like it's about who you're with yeah. what country right like you don't want to be you don't want to be doing the opposite of what other people are doing because mm. then you don't fit in. And if you yeah. don't fit in, you feel uncomfortable and they feel uncomfortable. Mm. That that was very interesting on one of the episodes, the one we were talking about with the Asian, I think she was like Asian American or she had moved here. At, yeah, she was born in Shanghai and moved at a young age. And so I kind of got confused because it's like a lot of become being American is about being an individual, being unique, right? And that's showcased in the show. Um, and I noticed, you know, in the episode, you were kind of like, you also want to make people comfortable. So I was like very confused. It was conflicting. I want to be individual. I want to wear like, all these colors and like. Well, you mean the, the, the not caring about what people think too at the same time and balancing kind of yes. those worlds, right? Yeah. And I, it was hard for me to like, 
take whose side because i understood that part too it's like you really want to make people around you comfortable but it's like how, how do you balance that like yeah so point- you're, you're probably referring to the bunny ep- the episode on bunny in mind your manners yeah yeah and she's 39 years old and she's wearing like panda onesies with a tail <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah right that like eight, Too month, cozy. eight month olds wear mm-hmm. and she wear that to a formal restaurant yeah for, for what reason what was the reason uh, because well i made her realize on the show and you really have to watch the episode yeah. uh-huh. i made her realize that the reason she tries to be so loud and, and aggressive and sort of you know obnoxious like in your face ha i'm gonna wear this is because she grew up feeling like she was a misfit mm. because she moved at, at a young age from shanghai to new jersey um where her mom was waiting tables and her father she says in the episode was abusive and and she made her she made her mother divorce her father because she was like you're gonna die if you don't divorce dad he's gonna kill you wow um and and then so she and then she you know she was like this fresh off the boat asian kid mm-hmm. in, in jersey going to public school right yeah that's a lot of adjustment of course and she was always told you're weird you don't fit in so her way was to almost like was basically to go OTT and be like, yeah. F you. Yeah. I'm really not going to fit in. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wear the most ridiculous shit at to a formal dinner. She doubled down. Exactly. Cool. And yeah. they like, so like, I feel like rebel culture was all about that, right? It's like 60, 70 punk. It's all about doing the opposite of what mm. is supposed to be kind of like traditional. How do you feel about that? What is? Yeah, I mean, I think. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not really Bunny. It's not really. Mm. It's not really her. Uh. And, and okay, like, yep, go wear that to like Burning Man if you want to. <laughs> but does the owner of a formal restaurant? Imagine if you owned a formal restaurant and somebody walked like that into your restaurant. Yeah. Do you yeah. want that? If imagine you're you're not the diner, like you're taking your wife to anniversary dinner. And somebody you know next to you is dressed like that, mm. so that that's kind of just more of that sensitivity. Yeah. A okay. lot of times, there's more deep rooted issues. Like I remember doing the same thing. I would overcompensate, you know, especially even at times where I would hear about um, the stereotypes of a- Asians being soft spoken or whatnot. I kind of wanted to go overboard, right. so I'd be mm-hmm. on stage cussing up yeah, a storm yeah. Yeah, exactly. and just saying all kinds of when shit they ask to us not to curse, when they ask us not to curse we're like nah we will yeah and then you get older and you get less arrogant you right. get less insecure and right. when you're more confident with yourself you don't need the extra frills to yeah. get people's attention mm. yeah you know and yeah that that's true confidence that's true. for sure yeah that's we, what... we we found strength in overcompensation when we were younger you know but definitely <laughs> now that because i have I have a pro next to me. I just have a few questions for you, if you don't mind. Yeah, please, I, like, bring I might it train on. Thought right now. I just go. Two yeah, things. I know, me too. Do you eat fast food? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is KFC still... is my, I love KFC. Okay, but is with it, fingers. Is I it still fingers. fast food with you? Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Just make well, sure. Well, these are things, these manners are when you're amongst company. It's but that's not like the thing, though. Solo, you know? I know, but I but think. But it's about knowing how to go high, lifestyle. how to go low, right? Excellent, excellent. That's etiquette. What True. what are some like deal breakers you've seen when you've gone on a date or some with somebody? Okay, so um, I really wish this had gone into the edit. They yeah. took it out. I mean, there was so much amazing stuff uh, during during production. But um, in episode, I think it's episode three with Rochelle, who's a really sweet mother of two girls. That's mm-hmm. I love that one. And she wants to get back into the workforce. So she almost was raised by her aunties. Okay, and and she said that. Her aunties like told her when she was very young, when you go on a date uh, or when you're, you know, just early stage dating somebody, say no to something Mm. and see how that person reacts. Mm. And if that person takes it well, it means they respect your boundaries. Mm. And if they don't take it well, they can't take no for an answer. They they say, you know, they could get into anger. They say, oh, if you really liked me, you do that. Right. That's a red flag. And yeah. I was like, and when she said that, I was like, wow. That's huge. <laughs> I wish I had known that in my 20s. Yeah. I would have yeah. avoided some really shitty relationships. Right. No, I've had a lot of the peer pressures and stuff. Come like, on. trust me, trust, like, chill, bro. <laughs> I said no, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's right. Even yeah. for friends, right? Yeah. Not just like dating, but yeah. also for friends. It's really important that people know how to respect your boundaries. Mm. Mm. So that's a deal breaker. Yeah. Okay, that's that's okay. true because I mean, anything could be smooth when you're parallel, right? Yeah. But then the moment there's a little argument or contradict, yeah. Do you look okay. for like just you know standard kind of gentlemanly stuff like pulling out your chair, like things like that? Is that that's not a deal Honestly, breaker necessarily, right? No, and and to me that is just kind of like icing on the cake or frills. Got um, you. I think the most important thing is a kind heart. Oh, 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. what about over... Okay, I feel like this has happened to me and my girlfriends a lot. We go on dates, first dates, and the man is like, or whoever the date is, is over talking they're like talking too much about themselves oh, are, are, are these new york guys <laughs> <laughs> it's every, it happens new a lot in la too oh, okay. it I happens think, in la I i've think... caught myself doing it too and i've and i've gotten called out for it and oh it's so annoying yeah and it, it is i realize <laughs> oh i did just kind of talk about myself and my career for the last 30 minutes straight and it's just kind of embarrassing when you, you... know when someone over talks it's also a sign of insecurity yeah mm. because it, i like to see if somebody's comfortable with silence yeah, that's true. Like people who are really, you know, secure and calm, they're comfortable with silence. People who are not, they feel like they always need to fill in the space. So they're right. always like talking, talking, talking. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's also we're in the indust or entertainment industry. So we're always it's like, like a two minute pitch. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's the problem. I don't know when to turn it off sometimes. That's yeah. A, yeah. You know, but it's, I've gotten better as I've gotten older. For Wait, sure. have you but pitched? I was the guy who was like, <laughs> can't be uncomfortable. I'd be so uncomfortable sometimes. I'd be at a wedding, right? And it just got really uncomfortable. Like there's no entertainment, there's no host or something. <laughs> I, would hop, I would hop on the stage and I would grab the microphone and start hosting a wedding that right. I was not invited to host. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's everybody feeling right now. <laughs> like, that's how I was feeling uneasy. Yeah, it was for me. Like, yeah. but yeah, that was the kind of that's the wow. levels of uncomfortability I've had with silence. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so I got to work on that. That's a little something. What do you think of service dogs in restaurants? <laughs> <laughs> hey, if, if that that means that they're really well behaved. Oh wow! I didn't to even be, look at it like to be that. a service dog, you have to go through basically six months of training, and I know this because last night my friend who hosted Thanksgiving dinner said right. he took his dog through six months of training so he could to to get a to become a service dog so that it could fly on Cathay Pacific with him back to Hong wow. Kong, like and sit in the cabin. Yeah. Wow! And I think that's beautiful. No, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Do you ever like get judgy with like do you it, because you teach this? This is your life, like. Is it annoying when you see people who don't have manners or like, do you, do you have to stop yourself from wanting to like just say something? Well, actually I'm like, I'm a pretty chill person and I, I think nobody wants to be around that annoying person who's always correcting other people, mm -hmm. which mm. in itself is bad, bad manners to yeah. always have, having to right. correct other people. So if I'm not teaching, like if I'm teaching and somebody's paying me, yeah. Okay. I give them their money's worth, <laughs> right? For sure. You're like, um, if I'm not teaching, I don't want to be working <laughs> if, if nobody's paying Damn. me. Yeah. yeah. But, but also if somebody asks mm. me specifically like, oh, how do I do this? Oh, you know, I did this and I felt it was awkward. What should I have done? Then I tell them. But otherwise, it doesn't bother me at all. Is there something that's taught in, in far as like taking care of a tab or paying the bill? Like what's what's the kind of the rules behind mm. that, or is that all depends on the scenario? Uh, it depends what country you're in, mm. who you're with, right? So like with Asians, you're always kind of fighting over the bill. So for example, um, so Christine Chu from Bling Empire yep. watched my show. She reached super sweet, reached out to me, told me she binged, um, and said, you know, can we meet up for some caviar? And I was like, well, I would <laughs> love that, but I'm leaving soon. So do you mind if we just meet at my hotel? You yeah, know, yeah. And, and so we had breakfast at my hotel. And um, and I put you know the thing on my tab because to me it was like she came mm. to my hotel she traveled, uh, and and she was like no no but I'm the one who initiated you should let me and so we were doing that very Chinese thing where it's like mm -hmm. we're trying to pay, um, and then I end up winning. I was like you can treat <laughs> me to caviar later, <laughs> you know. Yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it really depends who you're with. Like in America, everybody splits. Just you know we call it AA, right? Uh, we yeah. call Chinese people call it AA. Right 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 right. <laughs> I, I'm really good with that. Like just take not just taking care of the tab, but even in that kind of fighting situation mm. to win, you got to be strategic. Like next time, like that's that's the yeah. move yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. get the next give me time. Give me that now. Yeah, we got that next dinner thing coming up. You did that. And it's easy, and then you're like, okay. And then someone breaks, and it's easy to kind of you know handle that situation. No, but, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's it's interesting. There's been a lot of, I think Asians are looking, looked at these days with a lot of class because you have these shows on Netflix, that yeah. <laughs> Bling Empire. You I know, love your reactions your to manners. Bling Empire, by the way. I saw that YouTube clip. Yeah, don't tell Christina <laughs> no, no, about them. No, no, no. <laughs> what, what, what was it? What was the YouTube clip? No, no, it's just, it's just funny. It's just because, you know, she's, she's, she's keeping it real, you know? So, like, there's parts where it was just a little over the top. She's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was a reaction. Oh, it was a reaction yeah, video? Yeah. yeah. It wasn't it's Aiden. A, it's it was Etiquette, etiquette reaction. Yeah, etiquette So I reaction. break down like who has good etiquette and who has bad etiquette on Bling Empire. <laughs> oh. They got a lot of views. <laughs> yeah. So the show's been out for like a week or two? A week. A yeah, week. well, it's like 10 days. Today's day 10. How's the uh, uh, initial reaction been to it? Um, I've been getting a lot of love. I feel really humbled. 
uh, on Instagram. I actually spend an hour every morning, an hour every evening, just replying to all the direct messages wow. mm. from people who've watched the show. And uh, I've been picking, like, learning a few words of Portuguese because for some reason I have a lot of people in Brazil like watch, watching my show and they just message me in, in Portuguese. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think out of like, I think there's been like one message that was negative, which is like, Chinese medicine is a scam, you know? <laughs> um, but otherwise, the, all the other like, you know, over a thousand direct messages now have been really full of love. And I, uh, and it, it just, it really humbles me because, you know, I, I put my everything into the show. Um, it really showcases what I do mm. every day in China. Yeah. And I didn't actually, what was surprising was a lot of foreigners messaged me and were like, oh, you really, I'm so interested in Chinese culture now. Can you recommend a Chinese doctor to me in Mexico? Mm, wow. I wanted to message you that too. <laughs> and then and I, and what I say is like, go to your local Chinatown and ask the locals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I really just, did, I didn't expect a whole twist on how self-love comes come into the play and like confidence. Right. With around the manners, you know, and be like, and certain things that we behave the way we do because of insecurity or whatnot, you know, and that was the part that really surprised me. That like part really spoke to me too, because mm -hmm. without self love or that, it's just it's just theatrics, then you know, it's it's just empty like behavior. But one thing I wanted to just just uh, you know say about your show, the balance is really amazing. You know, mind your manners, like Steph. When I saw the title, I was like, "Oh man, she's gonna be teaching me. It's gonna be yeah. lecturing." But then I also, while I was watching it, it's like you're saying that to yourself as well. You know, it's like you're telling them to mind your manners. The way you you ha you're like half strict and then very empathetic at parts. There's times where you use Western and then you take her to eat like rice porridge. You know, it's just like the balance of both sides. I think you did that very well. Well, it's like a trend. It's not like a, I, I, like I thought it was going to be like an etiquette show where it's like, okay, you sit like this to like when you're here. And mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But it's more of a transformation show about mm. like how to, like there's like mothers, right? It's usually like mothers who I think it's very relatable. A lot of mothers who've kind of put all their everything into their children and now they're like going back into real life mm. like mm -hmm. and their whole identity was like became their kids and now they're like whoa like yeah, what's my I lost you know myself a little bit. yeah mm -hmm. and so it's more it's almost like taking each person and um almost like relearning how to like love yourself again or like things re remembering how to like bring bring out the things that maybe you enjoyed in the past or whatever it is it's like it's it's not exactly just like oh you need to like follow these rules and do this or that to like be happy but is like, it, it is really hard to learn new behaviors at that age isn't it like i saw a little bit of older group whether in their you know late 40s 50s and yeah i'm you know i'm i'm mid 30s now and there's stuff i'm mm. like i don't know if i'll ever change <laughs> at this point you know uh with certain things and and these are certain there's certain behavior in this that's so like subtle you know and just picking those up right. regularly i feel like it would be really hard to learn and implement into your everyday life you know yeah, no, a lot of it is very hard to learn, but you know, any any new habit takes, some professors say 30 days, some say 60 days, right? As long as you get like working out, for example, some people have never worked out in their life. If you pick it up and you do it every day for 30 days or 60 days, depending on you know which professor you, you adhere to, mm -hmm. then if you don't do it, you become really uncomfortable. Wow. Oh. So that's like, that's that's what it takes to pick up a new habit. Of course, what we're talking about is like heightened sensitivity. And right. really most of that stuff is like from childhood. Mm. which is why parents are so important, right? Mm, and being role right. models and, and, and showing and raising their kids so that when kids are young, they, they grow up with this and they see this because, yeah, when they do reach an older age, it is a little tougher. But part of self, part of that awareness is just, um, I think that a lot of stu my students, when they come, you see on day three or day four that they have this aha moment where it's kind of an enlightenment like a Daniel son with Mr. Miyagi, like he's been <laughs> wax on, wax off. It's like, why am I doing this? And then you're at your dining table and you're like, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got it. <laughs> like that, that BMW, moment. BMW, BMW. That moment. Yeah. Oh, the napkin. I'm all of a sudden right. folding it properly. Yeah. How did I, where did that come from? Like that moment. That's yeah. a, that happens. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then because they, they're very inquisitive, they're, so they're always asking questions. And I like to tell stories and anecdotes behind it. Um, so then, then they're starting to really understand, oh, that's spirit of etiquette. Ah, I see. It's not just the rule. It's like the meaning behind it. Yeah. And then they also learn about themselves through the process, right? So it's really about a journey. Mm. I, I like the part, too, where there was kind of this tongue twister game thing that you were doing. And 
was that so what is that exactly it's just to kind of say things uh like now i'm getting a little tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say things with intent like just you know use less words to be clear with to say more with less or what you know what was the idea behind a tongue twister games um so for steph in particular she is very loud she's louder than she needs to be but she told me that she wanted to be more classy more elegant and more ladylike mm. right so um so part of that was well i, I taught her breathing exercise and how to just speak at a pace that makes people comfortable around you and not when you're speaking at a really loud decibel non-stop right and you're kind of rah 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 like non-stop it actually can be quite stressful for people around you that's true sorry right it's just like how sometimes <laughs> when we when we're with somebody and let's say they're really intense or they're speaking really loudly or non-stop after we hang out with them we feel exhausted mm -hmm. yep. right mm -hmm. because they've used up our energy yep. it's kind of like i really believe in energy sorry so teaching her that and then also um Right. Also, also addiction, addiction thing. You know, it, it was also just fun to kind of like, I, I think it's most important for my students to have fun when they take my course. So yeah. there's always a bit of serious, but there's always a little bit of playful. Yeah. Is there some, uh, is there etiquette with like the amount of alcohol to drink at an event or whatnot? Because I do feel like the volume control thing is for yeah. me. When I get drunk, I am screaming oh in people's God. ears. <laughs> the plight of Asian Americans. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I feel like that is is tough, you know, yeah. especially when people get a few drinks and you know they get a little. And you gotta crazy. talk over the music. That's the harder know? part it's to so kind hard. of control with etiquette so uh, and manners. You can't really. It's no, so but for me, it's like, hey, I love back like downing shots with girlfriends. If 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 the vibe is that, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Like to so, me, there's nothing more fun. Okay, so let's talk about um, a moment. A few days ago, we went to go eat dinner. All of us were there, mm -hmm. a nice dinner, someone invited us, and there was a heated argument between these two, uh -huh. <laughs> and there were drinks involved, right? Yeah. So, but it was exhausting. It was embarrassing a little bit. Oh, right? they could not stop yeah. arguing. What were you guys fighting was, about? Uh, oh my god, It was you actually know, about <laughs> matters <laughs> in a sense, because- yeah, no, hold on. Dude. Come on. Well, I will, okay. Of course, you're gonna have this side to it. Well, I, my side was I was complaining that he's constantly late to a lot of the meetings that we're supposed to have. Yeah. Doesn't, my, it, doesn't defense, answer his phone. Let him yeah. finish. Okay, wait, sorry. I had a couple of lists. I had a whole list. Uh, and I hate how we have the fight and then we talk about it again. Yeah, I really wanted to talk about it in front of her because right, maybe right. she'll be able to. Okay. Not to answer to your yeah. phone. You know, I just felt like, yeah, these things that just grown folks are supposed to be just good at right wasn't being handled and that's how i felt i had a problem with that yeah and in my mind it was just like there's a time and place for conversations and i feel like when our friend is buying us dinner you we thought i was publicizing here. it a little too much <laughs> a little too much like i was saying family secrets or like, we could like just, no no not that it's just well, you, you weren't giving me him to face. the side yeah yeah you, you can pull me to the people. side that's and true. then just saying it it's embarrassing not only not only you had valid points, but it loses validation because of the way you executed it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that was true. my own thing. And then the reason why it got louder is because I was like, okay, let's, let's stop. Let's continue later, but kept going. So then I got to my defensive mode, you know what I mean? And then it just, it just rose like this, but you know, we made up at the end of the night. So as outsiders, how do we, you and I were outsiders and we sit. And well, we Tony know. was actually doing it. You were kind of being quiet. But Tony was like, hey, guys, guys, remember Tony was trying to jump in? Yeah, because my thing, yeah. which is true, is when people's voices, decimal levels increase. It trauma If you grew up in places where you're traumatized by mm -hmm. those things, it like is triggering. It's like if you, it's it reminded me of like when my parents or something or like parents screaming or yelling. And so yeah. it's like I go to my quiet place because that's like probably what naturally happened. You to withdraw. Me. I withdraw yeah. and I was like, okay, I don't want to deal with this. It made me want to go and like leave. And then at some point I saw him, you know, being like, you guys like, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I started being like, you guys stop. But it's, you know, when you guys are in it, this Korean rage, we all know this <laughs> Korean, the Korean Ajishi, yeah, the that's father true. comes out mm. and it's like, I don't know. I imagine like if this is like a movie, it's like dragons are flying all over the place. What? And like, I don't know. <laughs> That's fuck? how intense it so is. So you know what me. I would have done if I were there yeah. witnessing this? I want to know. Yes. As it was getting heated, I'd be like, uh, I would say something like, oh yeah, you know, Rick, you're always late, but hey guys, the funniest thing happened to me today. You guys have to listen to the story. Oh. So today, da -da 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 you just divert the whole yep. thing. Mm. I get in there kind of like nip it in the bud and then I'd immediately just like, 
without because once you're like oh my god guys stop don't talk about this all night you're like adding oil to fire yeah that's true and like, you're giving him the attention they're probably craving by yelling at each other yeah. like they want that yeah. touch, but if you just kind of brush it off like I'm not trying to hear that right now. Yeah, then. that's we, very we, we true. We just look actually. kind of yeah. stupid. We're just or, like, or, I, or I just be like, yeah, guys, just have this conversation by closed doors. Let me tell you the funniest thing that happened to me today. Right. Okay, how about when, okay, that's great, when the host wasn't paying attention and all of a sudden they're like, oh, what are you guys arguing about? What do you say to that person? Like, what, do you, what do you say to the host? Yeah, the host is like, was like having like, their I, own. I'd be like, oh, you know, those two, they're just having their own brotherly, you know, yeah. their mm. brotherly thing again. Yeah. Oh, what are we eating? Like, should we order right now? <laughs> this lobster so pasta is it's incredible. It's all about by the way. diverting. Yeah. That's a good move. That's, that's a good move. That's a very that's great a move. move. Because I, after when if somebody did that to me, I'd just be like, "Oh, okay, we're not." Yeah, yeah exactly. You were just diffused. <laughs> yeah. Diffused. Like, just, yeah, blew yeah, the blew exactly. The like, yeah, and the, all the energy is like gone, and everybody's focused on something else, and that's mm. it. Mm. Do you have tattoos? I don't. <laughs> okay, I was checking. I was like, eh, I wouldn't think you would. But you do. Yeah, I was like, I wouldn't think you had tattoos. Yeah. Did you say you went, you went to Georgetown University? I did. I, well, I used to have a belly ring. So oh, okay. so when I was, that's like the, and I used to have four piercings here when I was yeah. 13. And then I went to prep school in, in the East Coast. I went to Phillips Exeter. And everybody was so preppy that within two weeks, I took out all my piercings. Wow. And I like, you know, and I became preppy oh. <laughs> to fit in, right? It's yeah. like, because yeah. I was like, hmm, I think I'm too street for this place. <laughs> that is a very the pro proper school. Yeah. I like, feel oh, like some of those yeah, boarding like, schools, all girls, yeah. like private schools, they got it's the intense. worst kids. I, I remember I, I went to a public school in oh, LA yeah. and like a couple blocks down, there was this um, private school, Immaculate Heart. It was all girls. And like we would all party, like because we're in the same vicinity, and we go house parties. It's called and Immaculate Heart, Immaculate okay. Heart, all girls school. Right, and they were the wildest girls I've ever mm. partied with. Yeah, they're all so girls rebellious. Are wild. They're very <laughs> rebellious. It was wild. Yeah. yeah, and you know they come from like prestigious families and stuff. Of course, like there's too. a lot of carbonated energy. You know what I mean? What? <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like you have to shake it up. Like I come from a very sheltered place too. That's why I exploded. It's like when there's too many rules yeah. upon you and control, you kind of want to like let go at For some sure. point and you start rebelling. You went to a um um a hospitality school in Switzerland, right? It well, actually wasn't a hospitality school. So a lot of people go to a hospitality right. school. I went to a finishing school. Okay, what's the difference? You went there? to school in Switzerland too. That's crazy. Yeah, so so it's like I'm not there to learn how to be in a hotel management or or right. an F and B. I, you go there, the course is called a hostess course. So it's a, it's like a 75 year old school. BBC called it the the finishing school that refuses to be finished <laughs> yeah. because it because it's dying oh right. God. It's like a die. So yeah. so back in the day, so like Princess Diana went to finishing school, right? Like so so back in the day, uh, women did not have the opportunity to go to university, so they would finish their education at a finishing school in Switzerland, mm. or you know, I mean, in America, there's plenty of charm schools in the south, right? To to finish your education on how to be a lady to, to prepare you for society and you learn how to host, how to dress, like how to be appropriate, blah, 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 blah. All these things, how to plan a menu, how to do, how to see people if you're throwing a dinner party. Mm. Um, and so that's the kind of school I went to and I absolutely loved it. Like oh. I had so much fun there. Yeah. It's changed a lot because I think I, I've heard like charm schools were known to like get you prepared to, for marriage, right? Like before, yeah, like at the right, beginning Right, because back then, women were just good for marriage, basically. They were like, you don't need to an education, you don't need to vote. Right. Mm -hmm. You just need to get married back then. Mm -hmm, back then. Right, now it's very different. Now women have, you know, of course. more opportunities. So can you go to charm, like, can, or not charm, finishing school, is that almost like a weird, can you call it charm school? Or does it sound um, Well, in America, the, the term in America is charm school. Oh, okay. But it's finishing school in, you know, in Europe. Like if etiquette I, school. So I could go to- Yeah, to, anybody like, can, okay. anybody can. What is finishing implying? Like, <laughs> what, uh, like you, what are you finishing? Ah, now I'm finished with my uh, myself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm finished with the salad. You know, I'm finished. What, what's no, the no, finishing? No. What's the terminology? I think that means it's like, finishing your education. Oh, okay. Because that's what they thought like a, a woman needed for oh, education. Oh, oh, I thought right. it was like, let's put a polish on you. You, you could yeah, use yeah, a little yeah. finishing polish. If you can think of it that way. Yeah. A little polish. I like that. Well, yeah. why Polishing. Switzerland is always the place for these schools, like uh. etiquette and hospitality? Are they just... They, I actually, run that, I went to their... school in Switzerland too, oh. across the street from EHL in Luzon. The Ecole de Hotelieri. Oh. You know what I mean? The hotel, Which like, one did you go to? Luzon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lausanne. Lausanne. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you went to Lausanne. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Well, oh, went, cool! Wow, you went to no, no. I didn't go to the. I didn't go to the EHL. I oh. went to a school across the street from it. Was that high school or university? No, no, it was university. Oh, nice! Yeah. Three years. Uh, two years. I was there for two years. Yeah. How How was that? 
I didn't finish. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't go to the finishing school. I didn't go to the finishing school. You the continuation, school. but you didn't. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, well, I'm going to take some calls from people and see uh, what they what they got for us. Put on the Discord link. If you got a question for Sarah Jane Ho over here f- from Mind Your Manners on Netflix, out now yeah. on the new releases, just a week fresh. You know, let's go watch that show. Put it in the top ten. You know, what I mean, put it in the top ten yes, trending. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, six episodes. So fun. What happened? Uh, do I? Uh, just to hear, if you want to put it by your ear when yeah, they ask well, any questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, hit us up on the Discord. Um, this is day after Thanksgiving. We made it work right before she goes back to the East Coast and then back home uh, to China. Thank you for uh, so making this work. This is crazy. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm glad we were able to squeeze it in. So we're going to put the Discord link um, if there's any questions. Water real quick? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Got some water. I wish dudes went to more manners school or like they learned some manners. I'm so annoyed. <laughs> I get so annoyed. I'm just like, oh. I think for the most part, our, our crew has a lot of manners, honestly. Yeah, because you had Asian mothers. Yeah, yeah, no, can for you, sure. Can bad manners like just rub off on you? Like, can you like you know how like people talk about like being in presence of other people and you become more like them? Do you feel like when people have like oh that, yeah 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 no I just, believe I totally believe like who you, friends you're with you know what environment you're in will totally impact how you behave and what you become. Yeah. I, I didn't realize how much when I was younger there were things that my dad would just snap at me for and I hated him for doing it but it really did stick with me now yeah. I'm like, like I'm, I'm annoyed like by the same things when I see other people like do it smelling food what's an example <laughs> Uh, I, I don't like I can't stand people who just wake up too late. Mm. My 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 dad used to call me yeah. early in the morning just to, hear just your to voice. test me. Yeah. So he'd call me and I I had just woken up from the call and I'm I'm like I wake myself up I get up <laughs> and do a quick jog and yeah. I'm like hey dad like I, like I've been up for like three hours when I had just woken up and yeah. he could always tell that I you just woke tell. up. He He's was, outside the window. He like, was kind of, he was very <laughs> militant. Like my dad was very militant about these things and yeah. like I really hated that and, and I completely went to a different lifestyle where <laughs> i was going to studios late night and I, i'd wake up late and all that and but now i'm getting closer to like my dad for some reason mm, i think that's scary. what happens scary, that's what happens. Man. yeah there's things that yeah what else what else did my dad hate uh i don't know it was he was so militant i wanted to eat fast in the you know dining room just to get out of there right like wow. he was a scary scary dude mm. at the time yeah wasn't a pleasant experience for me, to be honest. Sir, did you ever come across someone who was incorrigible? Oh yeah, plenty of times. And how do you break it to him? Just like <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, it's not your, it's not your responsibility to him. Yeah, not my problem. It's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right, hit up. Send Murder Boy through. <clears throat> hey, hello. Hi. What's up? Hi. Oh, I feel nervous because like, Sarah <laughs> seems so like prim and proper. Like, <laughs> imagine how I feel right now, man. <laughs> my bad, my bad. <sighs> um, so I had a question for you. Yeah, bring it on. I um I have yet to watch your show, but after watching you on here, I'm very excited because I love the way you carry yourself, how you speak. Like, it's just so eloquent, and it's almost like Gilmore Girls in real life. <laughs> 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 but um, I wanted to ask you, like I said, I haven't watched it, so I don't know if you tackle this on any of your shows or podcasts, whatever it may be. But um, to me, I've always thought communication is key. Like if you have a problem with a friend or something, you can always talk it out and like be like, this is what triggered me. This is why I'm feeling this way. I was just curious, what are your thoughts on that? Like handling situations where you want to make things right you know if, if that makes sense yeah and absolutely and that's actually one thing i really love about my friends in america because my american friends grew up with that right it's, i feel like what i notice about my um american i guess mostly caucasian friends is that when they were young <laughs> their their mothers are like hey honey how was school today right my mother never once asked me how school was yeah yeah and and so um i think that for because at least I'm teaching in China and I have a lot of Chinese students who grew up with Chinese parents right the whole Chinese culture thing where we were not encouraged to really it's like okay deal with it yourself right yeah. like ha- control your emotions and you go deal with it and and there's really not much communication it's in fact one of the biggest 
uh, that there's this term in Chinese which is called da leng jian, which is like fighting a cold war, basically mm. silent treatment. Mm. Right, that that's very Asian yeah. mm. to give silent treatment, and obviously a lot of other friends from other cultures, you know, ha- ha- do that too. But uh, but you know, the best way really is to, when there's conflict is to communicate, and it's to just do it in exactly the way that Mo Boy said, which is say, you know, this is this is how I'm feeling, this is how I'm I'm, I'm hurt, um, and I do I I don't really go into it that much in the show, mind your manners, but in my we do have a module um, called communicating in relationships in back in China in my school. And uh, and we follow um, because I've read a lot of books about sort of like the Harvard Negotiation Project uh, and how to have difficult conversations is one of my favorite books for those of you out there. If you're looking for something to read, how to have difficult conversations. Um, and and they talk about the ladder of inference. So a lot of the times, let's say if somebody does some, a friend does something to upset us, then we probably jump to conclusions. We think they're coming from, you know, an evil place. And we say, oh, you know, that, that really, you know, you're so blah, 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 right? Like a lot of people said, oh, you're such an idiot. Oh, you're so mean, blah, blah, blah. But actually, that's not very effective. The most effective way is to follow the ladder of inference, which is to, number one, state the facts. Like, oh, you know, on, on such and such a day, you, like I did something and then you reacted, you said this, okay? Just stick to the facts. Step two is to say how I interpreted what those facts, right? Because everybody has a different interpretation depending mm. on how you grew up, what your parents were like, what your culture is like, right? So I, you know, I interpret it a different way from the way John would interpret it maybe. And so, so I interpret it, you know, X, Y, Z way. And then the third step is how it made me feel, which is what my boy just mentioned, which is always really important to say, especially in intimate relationships, to let yourself be vulnerable, which I think sometimes, at least in Chinese culture, we don't like to let ourselves be vulnerable. We feel like we always have to have this hard shell exterior. Well, that holds you back from having any intimate, meaningful relationships. Mm. Um, and so to say, well, you know, I felt really hurt. I felt really betrayed, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then the next step is to say, but, you know, please tell me, like, where were you coming from when mm. you said that? Right. Right. And then blah, blah, blah. So it's the ladder of inference. It's so hard to, you know, say those things sometimes. <clears throat> but I, I do realize that anytime we do get an argument and we start being standoffish for weeks and all of a sudden we finally have that conf- we talk. And when, when you actually say that, like words like I was really hurt, the other person is like, they're like, my bad. Like they'll actually yeah, break. Yeah, they soften, right? They so, do soften. Yeah. And, and there's a term in Chinese as well. It's like, uh, it's like hard gets hard, and then soft gets goes soft, right? So if somebody softens and takes a step back, then you automatically you you're like, oh, I just want to protect my friend's feelings, right? And you get in there, and you're like, I'm I'm sorry, you know, that's that's not what I meant. And yeah. it's just so powerful. A lot of the times, people are afraid of conflict in relationships because they're like, oh, I don't want to have that conflict. Does it mean we'll break up or? Actually, sometimes conflicts are the best opportunities to deepen and strengthen mm. your relationship because one, when you do have that conversation, you come out like so. I, either you break up and you're really not meant yeah, to be yeah. together, or you just feel like, wow, like we just reached another level in our relationship. We built more mm. muscle, you know. Mm-hmm. Do you have any tips for like Asian families, like it, when you're talking to, like I would think that this works if we had similar like communication, like. We could both speak English, but like when so, you know, a lot of us have like parents where we don't speak the exact same language, and there's a language barrier um, and cultural barriers. Like how to kind of go about like what rules maybe or things we can do to like be able to say or explain how we feel to our parents who just wouldn't necessarily understand what I had to say. Like you know, I would like when I think of my mom, like I have to like maybe I have to like get her a gift also to make her feel speak her love language yeah it's like a love language do you have any tips on that for like our parents you know i am learning every day um, (laughs) with with my dad who i love i absolutely love my dad he's he's a gentleman every sense of the word he treats everybody the same whether it's margaret thatcher or you know a cleaning lady at his office (laughs) yeah he's just so respectful and has the same energy Mm. with everybody um but uh he has political views that I may not, (laughs) you know, right? It's always, it goes back to that. And sometimes I find it really difficult to communicate with him because he goes to WhatsApp University, right? All his info is from other uncles on WhatsApp. And he's like, they're forwarding them around to each other. Half of it is fake news. I know my dad is definitely not listening to this podcast, so I can say this. (laughs) Um, and, uh, And so I get frustrated too. And in fact, when I was going through a 60 day lockdown in Shanghai in my apartment, 
this this April and May. It was supposed to be four days. It became sixty days, oh. you know, for the safety of everybody in China, so that we don't get COVID. Yeah. Um, you know, I I went through some really like highs but lows emotionally, and I really struggled with that, you know, psychologically. And uh, and my dad, I felt wasn't what I you know he wasn't supporting me emotionally in the, in the way that I wanted him to. And I just broke down, and then I, but I just told, then I remembered, okay, ladder of inference, and I was like, Dad, you know what you're saying, is is really hurting me, and I don't need you to try and like fix things or tell me that, <laughs> I just need you to like, you know, yeah. understand that I'm going through some difficult times right now, and and then and and then my dad softened, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. that happened with my mom recently because she kept mentioning all these things that my friends are doing, like amazing, incredible things, and I was like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 I was like, stop talking about them. I know the billboards right across the street. I see it. I see it. Oh. And she's like, okay, I didn't realize you were feeling this way. Yeah. And I'm like teary eyed and shit. Oh. And then she she kind of like chilled out. She's like, oh, don't worry, I won't mention them again. Oh. Yeah. And I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that was an example. Yeah. Um, uh, you got any more calls, Tony, or what? Oh yeah, my, oh yeah, thanks, my boy. He was my boy. Thank you for the call, man. Yeah, thanks, bro. It was, it was very nice meeting you, Sarah Jane, and I'm gonna watch your Netflix special right Yay. after this. So thank, thank you. Oh yeah, you. watch it. Yeah. Yay. Peace, brother. All right, what we got here? Darwo. Darwo, what's up, Darwo? Hello. Hey, what's up? What's good? What's up, bro? Hey, um, I'm just curious. Um, so with the etiquette and how like you study so many different cultures and different etiquettes do you sometimes find yourself confusing um like the different etiquette between do i get confused by 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 different countries etiquettes um yeah like usually like like you mix it up like you mix it like for example like you mix like an indian uh culture of like chinese culture by accident (laughs) um I I wouldn't I wouldn't say so, but I I would say that uh, when I when I go to a different country, I do have to be more mindful of myself. Mm. So, for example, in China, everybody's taking pictures of everything. Mm. Like when the food comes out, you're taking pictures. When you take a selfie, you're doing it from like you know like a diff- ten degree angle. It's like this. <laughs> yeah, that's like how what everybody <laughs> does, right? And then you do fill in the three sixty degrees, and. Uh, and then so when I leave that, when I leave China and I, you know, come to the States or I go to, especially I go to London or something, like you don't do that, right? Yeah. Um, and so then I have to be like much more mindful, like, yep, okay, no, you know, <laughs> like take it down a notch. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe not even like have my phone on the table. Yeah. Uh, so I do have to be more mindful. So I have to catch myself like, okay, you know, who am I with? Where am I? Um, I don't want to make a fool of myself. And uh, but but I don't really get confused for, for, for the different countries. Is there stuff that like w- that you've learned where finally it kind of makes sense why people do a certain thing? But also, is there stuff that you're like, why the f- why? You know, like you do it <laughs> and it's you know that it's proper. You learned that at the school and stuff. But you're like, this shit just doesn't make sense. Like, why do we do this thing? Well, you know, I've I grew up. So at Georgetown, I was an English major and I loved reading books and taking history lessons. So I love learning and and also sharing the history behind a lot of etiquette and uh, so for example okay why do we shake hands well we shake hands because back in the day was to show we were unarmed Mm. wow Mm. why why do why do we when we toast you know we clink glasses Mm. because back then the host would do that to show that um well you you'd clink and it'd be a hearty clink where like droplets would be spilled into each other's cups to show that I didn't poison your wine glass. Oh. Wow. So you shake hands and be like, oh, thank God you don't have a gun. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> nice to meet yeah. you. Drink. A oh, sword. Thank God you didn't poison yeah. me. No sword. No, no yeah. sword. It was a cold world back then, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's nuts. Wait, wait, what was the clinking? What was the... To make sure, to show that I haven't poisoned your wine glass. So, you know, back back in the day, the mugs, like they'll do it and a little bit of beer goes into my cup, goes into your oh, cup. Oh, is, yeah. is that it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, oh. the Germans That's definitely not COVID friendly. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> That's nuts. interesting. Okay, yeah, all right. So it's good cool. to do your research on these yeah, things and know sure. why we do it. Exactly. Yeah. Apparently, we haven't. <laughs> We're still out here dapping people up. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Yo, Dawa, what thanks for thanks for hitting us up, bro. Yeah. No oh. worries. I'll, I'll check out your Netflix. Show. Thank you. Yes, yes sir. Top ten. All right. 
Cool. Uh, we got one more. What is it? Abel's rap. Abelis. Okay. Abelis. What's up? What's up, brother? Oh. Hey, what's up? Hi. Hey. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, I was just gonna ask. Um, how do you like? I guess. Uh, I mean, just kind of related to like a previous like discussion, I guess. But um, like, how do you deal with the perception of um, I guess manners or etiquette or whatever as being just kind of a relic of like you know, bourgeois, aristocratic, like, norms. Because uh, obviously this stuff, you know, sometimes it's related to class, you know. Do people feel like, oh, people just do this stuff as a way of looking down on, you know, poor people or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you know, that's a really good question because uh, I think that's so many people's misconception of what etiquette is. And that's exactly why I want to redefine etiquette. Mm. And what Netflix also... I'm just so grateful that they were on the same page as me and we wanted to tell the world etiquette is not elitist. Etiquette is for everybody because etiquette is about empathy and everybody has the capacity to be empathetic. Mm. And once you have empathy, then you can realize that how it can actually change your life mm. and it can change your relationships with people and it can help you get, you know, achieve a lot of things that, that you want because if people like you, Right then, then life is a lot easier um, mm. in a lot of ways. Wow! Yeah, so yeah. a lot of people think, oh, etiquette should be taught by a fifty, you know, middle-aged woman with a bun on her head and you know, <laughs> in a suit. But um, you know, I'm a Sagittarius, not a Virgo. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> I'm a Virgo. <laughs> my my dad's is, a Virgo. My mom. My mom is a Sagittarius. Oh, there you go. Oh, you maybe, maybe that's why you two don't get along. <laughs> You guys seem getting along, but no, 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 no. Yeah, actually, my my best friend, um, one of my best friends in the world is Virgo. I'm seeing her in Art Basel in nice. a few days. Oh, cool. But my dad, I knew from a young age that I could never date a Virgo <laughs> because my dad is so, yeah, he's so Virgo. Virgo <laughs> men, especially, are like, oh my goodness, they're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, okay. Well, thanks well. for calling. Remember, you could be broke and still have manners. Yep. Oh, yeah. I love that. That was great. <laughs> Especially in a time like now where there's, well, first of all, we all just kind of got out of lockdowns, right? So we're all kind of oh, getting used to socializing again. Yeah. Right. Um, but look at the behavior online. There's so much online misbehavior. There's workplace bullying. For sure. The kids, right, in schools, hiding behind screens. I mean, it's, it's really tough time these days and mm. i think that's why it's actually very timely that my show has come out now yeah the empathy part that really hit yeah we got we got anybody else are we good okay cool we're gonna wrap it up right now sarah jane ho the host of netflix's mind your manners out now thank you so much for coming on the show thank Last you so much minute. thank you john you learned thank you, so thank much you. uh i had a lot of questions yeah tad bit more nervous than usual <laughs> um, 